I want to welcome you to the Sunday podcast of the Prodigal Son. You know, I do these podcasts on Sundays to make sure people get fed on Sundays. There's a lot of people out here that don't get to come to church on Sundays, and I want to make sure that you get God's Word. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. I want to take the time to to thank my Heavenly Father for the, for the opportunity to be with y'all. Amen. There's something that uh, that the Lord has given me over the years that He's called me to give it to everybody that I see. Because re- really, I lived 40, the biggest part of four decades, not knowing who I was, who God had made me to be. And we want to, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to be in the eighth chapter of Romans. But when we get started, I want you to understand my wife's got some cards back there. I've been in a study for the last, well, next month will be a year on my podcast. And 10 months of that study is on that card, the scriptures that we've done. And, and it's basically teaching who we are in Christ, who He has made us to be, and promised us that we are, we're, are in His Word. Let's pray. Father, I praise You and I thank You, God, for this opportunity. Lord, I pray that You touch and touch each and every heart here today that they might see and understand what you have said about them. Lord, I praise you and I thank you for your word, the strength and the confidence that it gives each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that you touch hearts and lives in a mighty way. Touch my mind, touch my mouth. Help me to be the light and the vessel that you can speak through. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. We're going to be in Romans, the 37th or the 8th verse, or 8th chapter in the 37th verse. It says, Nay, in all these, these things we are more than conquerors through him that loves, loved us. It says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, a lot of y'all don't know me. I've preached all over in in Bradley County for a lot of years, I backslid years and years ago. And the reason I done that is because I was never taught who I was. Religion says you're just an old sinner saved by grace. I'm here to tell you you're a lot more than man says you are. There was a time in my life I had no confidence in Stacy. I could believe it for Tracy. I could believe it for any human being that walked the face of this earth about what God said about them. But I couldn't believe it for myself. I didn't realize what Jesus done when he died on the cross for me. I didn't understand that. I was never taught that. You know, the biggest part of the church, all they've ever seen is religion, ritual. You go to church, you make sure you're there every time the doors are open. I'm going to tell you you something. If you only study that word at the most three times a week, you're going to dry up to nothing. If you ate three times a week, what would happen to us? Really think about it. What would happen to us? Over a short period of time, you would die of starvation. But yet, there's people that don't crack that book unless they're sitting listening to a man teach them out of that book. Look here. God's Word is true 
above all opinion. I come, I come to that conclusion years ago, and I want you to understand that He is no respecter of person. What He has said in that book about me, about any other Christian in this world, He said it to you. He wants you to be able to know and understand that you can count on what He says to you, for you, and about you. And nothing in this world can separate you from that love. What He has said. I, I, I used to be the world's worst about picking up the phone and calling and saying, what do you think about this? I don't do that anymore. Because I, found, I figured out most of the people I was asking were as in bad a shape or worse shape than I was. They're just trying to guess something to sound good. Look here. That book right there is the best guide that you'll ever find. The Holy Spirit that lives here in me can guide me through that book far better than any man. And I want you to I want you to see and understand that what God has said for you for me, He has said for you. And He that, that you talked about it this morning, He said He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And if you'll come to that conclusion, like I said a year ago, the Lord led me to teach on all those scriptures on that card. I spent 10 months in, on one subject. When I got done with it, he said, I'm not done. He said, you get into Romans, and if the Lord don't change my mind, I'll be in the epistles until I'm done with them. Because there's millions, not a few, but millions, hundreds of millions of people that walk the face of this planet lack past salvation. Now understand this, past being born again, they lack the most important thing that they, have, that they can ever get hold of. And that is knowing who He has made them to be. Knowing what He says in His Word, we missed it. The church has missed the, uh, a very important fact of who they are in life. I walk through, I walk through life today and, and look at people and, and some of them, I, I think, my goodness, if you could just open your eyes to what that book says and get a hold of what God is saying in it, this world wouldn't be in the shape it's in. I'm going to tell you a story. And to God be the glory. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, nothing that I've done other than have enough sense to believe Him. My wife and I were coming, heading back home in January from a trip. We were flying into Charlotte, North Carolina the 23rd of January of this year. And I had no symptoms, had no idea I was sick. They said I had COVID. Got on a plane, flew, flew almost five hours to Charlotte. When the plane landed, she said I couldn't, they couldn't wake me up. I was, you know, out. Checked my oxygen, it was at 30. 30. If you know anything about oxygen saturation, that's right there at the death's door. It's supposed to be 100 in the high 90s. She said they got me woke up, and she, I stood, just sat up and grinned at them. You know, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't remember, I didn't remember leaving the motel, driving, taking the rental car back, going through security at the airport. Didn't remember nothing was going on. Just I'd slept the biggest part of the week off and on. And said they got me out, got me out. The ambulance took me off the plane. I spent almost two weeks or two weeks in in Charlotte in the hospital. The biggest part of that two weeks was intensive care. I don't know if you've ever 
come through a stroke. They said I had three strokes, a mild heart attack, and had blood clots all in my lungs due to COVID. I couldn't take a breath. It just felt like somebody sticking a knife in me. And sitting there in bed, you know, I'm just, you, it's like you're looking through a, a fog trying to see. And now this is, this is what I want you to understand. This is what God's word will do for you if you've got it here. Uh, see, the Holy Spirit has to have something to work with. And if we're empty of the truth, if we're empty of the truth, which is what God says, what, what has he got to work with? Because the Holy Spirit will always point you to that book. I don't care what. I heard a story about a, a preacher that got, got in his mind that he wanted to hear from God. Said he fasted past 40 days. Said he almost died. Said God finally did speak to him. And the preacher that told the story, he said the funny thing about it, after all that pain and suffering and, and just really getting out there in left field, in, in other words, he said he could have got everything that he come out all that with out of the book of Ephesians. God's going to speak to you. He's going to speak to you through that book. I promise you. Ain't nothing in this world that comes against you will ever be answered by other than that book. If, if, if a spirit that's pushing you is pushing you off out in left field and you ain't got scripture to back that up, you better run. You better run because I'm going I'm to tell you something. Doubt, fear, and unbelief plagued me through my first 40 years of life. That's what Satan wants to do. He wants to always keep your, your sin, what we was talking about this morning, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And everybody will agree with that. But they fail to, to, to read the, the very next verse which says we're, we've been justified freely by God's grace that is in the redemption of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. See, we, we take one little verse and use it to push people where we want them to be instead of rightly dividing the Word of God and teaching them who they are. Because I'm, I promise you something. If I can talk you into something, the devil can talk you out of it. But if that book settles it right here in your heart, there ain't nothing in this world can jar it out of you. I sat in a fog. Missy said, Missy said she didn't, you know, she didn't know if I was going to live the first three or four days that we was in there. In there. I sat in a fog, just, you know, just kind of, out left field. I didn't know where. I couldn't talk. She said they took me to a to get a CT scan. I come back and I could, I sounded like I'd been uh, had a uh, been deaf all my life. Couldn't speak, make noise, and that's about it. But when I when when I started coming out of that fog, you know what come up in me? It wasn't fear, cause I'd be I I'd, I'd wake up and look and I'm all this junk going on around you, and they stick them swabs up, you know, for, feel like it's going to bust out the top of your head and just all kinds of mess going on. But the fir very first thing that come to my mind when I started thinking just a little bit clearly was Isaiah 53, 5, that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I am healed. She and I, agreed on that scripture in intensive care in Charlotte, North Carolina. Before I left there, I was talking again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to encourage you, don't believe me. Don't take my word for it. Because you'll, you'll come to a place in your life where you need mo far more than a man can give you. 
I, there was no man that could help me in Charlotte. No doctors. I'm satisfied if, if they had, have got their way, I'd have never left that hospital. If I'd have had what most people have in my head and in my heart, which is doubt and fear and unbelief, I'd have died in that hospital. Because the doctors were saying, he, he sit, stood beside my bed and said, if you get any worse, we're going to put you on ventilator. And you know what I said? All I could get out was no vent. He looks past her, past me and looks at her. She said, he said, we can't take his word for that. She said, you better take mine. No ventilator. I'd get up out of that bed, try to straighten that bed up. My oxygen being in the 90s, it just... They'd come through the door. Hey, get back to bed. I'm like, just chill out a minute. Let me fix this bed. I'm good. You know, my, it down in the 60s. It done that, done that for months. You know, we left there, and it's all I could do to get up and walk across the house. But I knew what I believed. I knew that what he had said in his word was mine. I settled it a long time ago. That's what I want you to understand something this morning. Settle what God says about you for you. Not for me. Not for your pastor. Not for anyone else in this world. Settle it for you. Because if there's any ever a time that you need, that this world needs to know what this book says, it's today. We live in a world that is jacked up. I mean, everywhere you look, the devil runs rampant. And, well, I don't really know how I, how, what I think about that scripture. You know what I think about this word? It's what it says. It's what it means. I was, I was having lunch with a, me and my dad years ago. I just started getting a hold of these, these truths that you could count on what God said. We were having lunch with a lady, and, and uh, we were talking about another friend of ours that was, that was deathly sick. And uh, we were talking about what was going on. This lady spoke up in, in, in just plain old doubt. She said, why, well, his, his wife thinks that he's going to be healed. Just like that. And I thought a minute. I looked at her. I said, will you do me a favor? She said, well, yeah, what is it? I said, if I ever get sick, don't pray for me. <laughs> She laughed about it just like y'all did, but I was serious as a heart attack. Don't open your mouth about Stacy if you can't believe what that book says. And that's exactly what she was doing. Why, he's dead. He's a dead man. And there ain't nothing we can do about it. Bull. I'm not, I, I won't stand for that. I'm not going to stand and tell you that I can't believe what God said. It's the, the same as calling him a liar. I made up my mind a long time ago that I'm, I will never call God a liar again. He's not a liar. Numbers 23, 19. Let me read that. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man. He's not human. A lot of people think God is, is uh, human. He's got human, human, fragile human emotions. And He's someone... That if you make him mad, he's going to turn up his nose at you and walk away. That ain't God. That's religion. That's some of his religious people that don't know any better, but that ain't God. Romans 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not Make it good. I'm in this jail over here in Bradley County three or four times a week. 
my ministry is geared around teaching what I'm teaching this morning. My podcast has been going since 2018, and I have made it a point to let people know it's free, don't cost you anything. And, and if you will listen and try to understand what God is saying in His Word, you can be set free from all the junk that you know, man's traditions makes God's Word of no effect. What man has took and twisted. I was, I was having lunch with a guy one time. I had three pages of scriptures about a, about a subject that he and I had been, had been talking about doing at the church we were attending. We were going through all these scriptures. I'm trying to tell him, you know, this and that. He said, well, I'm not going to tell you the subject it was, but it's a very simple thing. It wasn't, wasn't hard to understand. But he threw this scripture out. I said, where did you get that from? What, what are you talking about? He said, well, you got to take it a little bit out of context to, learn, to understand what I'm saying. Honey, I ain't going to take nothing out of context. I'm not going to twist that word to get my way. It ain't going to happen. That's religion. That's thick, thick-headed. That's somebody that wants their way over and above God's will. And, and is willing to do anything to get that way. Look here. God wants more than anything to help us. He wants more than anything to see this world turn around. But you know what He needs to do it? We're not, we're not out of people to preach to. We're not out of people or places to preach. We're out of time. A decade ago, five years ago, I'd have never thought that the nation that I grew up in had turned into what it had. But you can't turn on the news anymore, anymore and get any kind of solid anything. Our president needs prayer. He don't need to be hammered on. He needs prayer. He's in over his head. And we need to understand that the only light that the world's ever going to see in this world is going to shine through us. I left that hospital over there. God done a miracle. You're, look, you're looking at a miracle because I was a dead man on that, on that plane if, if it had lasted just a few minutes longer, that flight. They had, they had found me dead on that plane. 30. Oxygen of 30. But God seen fit to do exactly what His Word said. Restore me. Heal me. And I know the devil done all that he could do to kill me, to shut me up. Before, because for the last four years, I have been doing everything that I can to teach people who that they are or who that they can be in Christ. See, we've, we've lived a life trying to be good enough to receive what Jesus Christ died to pay for to give us. What did I say? We've been justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Walk in that truth. Walk in the truth that you know without a shadow of a doubt if you're born again, don't put it to bed. Put that decision to bed. You understand what I, I, de I dealt with? I doubted, I struggled with salvation alone because I put myself in a place that I just couldn't see Stacy ever measuring up. But the sad part about it, Jesus died to, so I could measure up. 
But I couldn't see it. I could not see the fact that what God had done for me, He done it regardless. I was coming out of Chatsworth, Georgia. This has been close to 30 years ago. Come, turned on Hall Shepherd Road, coming over to Spring Place Road, coming home. We lived on the south end of Cleveland at this time. You got to understand, this has been 30 years ago. You can call it a vision, you can call it whatever you want to. I saw a picture of an old dehydrated man standing in the middle of a crystal clear river, just as, I mean, it's like just. You could see right through it. He was knee deep in water, dying of thirst. And I thought this, this, like I said, this has been 30 years ago. And I thought for 25 of those 30 years that that man was a lost man. Get a hold of this now. Understand what I'm talking about. God's been dealing with me my entire adult life about who I was. That man, I could just see it, was a man that refused to take of the water of life freely and accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. I thought he was lost. But not too long ago, just a few years ago, we moved out here on off the Lower River Road. I walked out of the garage, walking out through the yard, got about halfway through the yard, and the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, son, that man wasn't a lost man. I knew instantly what he was talking about. I mean, 30 years ago, it just come right back to me. I saw all that old man dying of malnutrition and thirst, just dehydrated, just didn't look like he could take another step. That's what I'm talking about, putting this in you. He said, that man wasn't a lost man. He said, that man was a religious man that refused to believe what I have written down for him to believe, to stand in, to walk in, and understand that regardless of what the world says, that book is true. Wasn't too long after that, I realized that uh, that man was me. I'd called him a liar for years and years and years, thinking I was being humble. Oh no, I'm just I'm just an old sinner. I wouldn't I wouldn't dare say that I'm a new creature. What's Romans or Second Corinthians five seventeen says? In Him, we are new creatures. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one bigger than that. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, He, who is He? God made Him, who is Him? Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus didn't know any sin so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. When are you going to believe that? I'm going to tell you something. You ever want to be strong in yourself? Be strong in who He has made you to be. Because I promise you, I promise you the, the devil will do everything he can to keep you focused on you. Focused on how many shortcomings that you have lived through in your life. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. If God's forgiven me, don't you dare bring it up. I ain't ain't one. I ain't big enough to start dwelling on my past because I've got one as long as your leg. But I'm not going to say that God hadn't forgiven me why? Because he's forgiven you. He's forgot about it. And who am I to bring it up? So when you when you when you get in a place like, like I was talking about, if you're if you're depending on this pastor to feed you, 
to lead you and to feed you. He's going to be pointing you to this book. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the Word. You say, well, I can't be in church all the time. No, you can't. God gave me a revelation here just a few years ago. Faith comes by hearing, right? It comes, don't come by reading. If you can find that in that book, I'll eat the page. It don't come by reading. It comes by hearing. You say, well, I can't, I can't hear, hear him preach to me all the time. You're exactly right. It's not his place to feed you every day of your life. It's yours. When you read that book, you read that book out loud. So the most important opinion in this world, you can hear it. And we'll have a uh, we'll have an altar of prayer for liars if you can't say my opinion means more than me than anybody else's in the world. Because I promise you, when the rubber hits the road, it does. Your opinion means more to you than anybody else's. So if your ears are hearing this truth being read over you so you can hear it, what are you doing? If you're reading God's truth, if you're, you're, you're speaking God's truth over the situations in your life, if I'd have been laying in that bed and started yelling, what am I going to do? My God, I'm sick. What am I going to do? You know what? You wouldn't be talking to me today. I'm satisfied of it. I told somebody on the phone. I was sitting in the in the hospital bed talking on the phone. Don't even remember who I was talking about. But I told him, I said, the whole time all this is going on, I never had one ounce of doubt that I wasn't going to come through all this whole. And I, I, it never even crossed my mind that I wasn't going to make it. And I give God all the glory because if it wasn't for this, getting stuffed into my heart every day, renewing my mind. Romans 12 and 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Look here, the biggest battleground that you've ever seen in this world is between your ears. Satan wants to wear you out over your mistakes. I used to be the world's worst, stand up behind the pulpit and do exactly the way everybody else did. Well, you know, I just, I've made a lot of mistakes. Now, never again. Why? Because I know who I am. There's not a doubt in my mind who I am. And they said, people come up and say, well, what, who do you think you are? Just sit down there. And I'll tell you in about 30 minutes. I promise you, I will assure you of where Stacy stands in my life. I, I, you get around me talking a bunch of doubt, fear, and unbelief. If I don't tell you to hush, I'll walk away. I had somebody call me in the hospital in a panic. Just that gator running like that. You know, I heard old Alan talk about that gator. Just b- b- bumping them gums. A bunch of doubt, fear. What are you going to do? You better listen to them doctors. If I'd listen to them doctors, I'd be a dead man today. I told them, I said, do you know what hush means? They said, yeah. I said, hush, don't say another word. If you can't call me and say something good, don't call. And then Missy, give them another dose when I, I just, I'm like this. That, those lies wanted to get over into bed with me. I ain't putting up with that mess. If the devil goes to speaking, the best thing you can do is shut him up with the word. What did Jesus do in the garden? What did he do? It is written. It, he didn't get mad and cuss and throw rocks. He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Guess what the devil had to do? He had to go. Bible says to submit yourself, therefore to God. 
resist the devil, and he has to flee. How do you submit? You say, well, how do I submit myself to God? Look here. I used to think that I had to submit myself to God over a pool of tears on all fours. That ain't submission. I want you to understand that. That's not submission. Submitting yourself to God is submitting yourself to this book yes, sir. and what it says. Yes, sir. Because when, when you decide in your heart that what this says above and beyond any man and his opinion, when you come to the conclusion that you have renewed your mind to agree with your born-again spirit, we're a triune being, right? Right? We're made in the image of God. Right? We're a born again man. Lives in a body. Where, what is our soul? I'm, I'm going to correct some, th some things about this. Our soul is our mind. Our mind, our will, and our emotions. And if you renew your mind to what, this, what, what, you, what your spirit man knows, if you're born again, you know in your heart that you're born again. But there's so many people out here in this world that have not convinced themselves that they can count on that book. But a renewed mind and a born again spirit can control this ugly mess right here. Two against one will win every time. I tell them at the jail all the time. I'm like I say, I'm in there three or four days a week, every week. I have people in that jail that depend on Stacy coming. The first time I walked in there and preached, there was one of the inmates come up, and he's a friend of mine today. We talk on a weekly basis, if not every day. He said, you're the only man that's come in here and tried to teach what Paul was just died to give us for the church, the epistles. Read Paul's writings. Read what Paul... Paul was a, was a pit poster child for a religious man, right? He said, I'm a Hebrew. I was a Hebrew above Hebrews. Yet I counted all as dung that I might win Christ. He said, I strive to present every man perfect before God in Christ Jesus. Realize that what, what this book says about you is the truth. Don't let him, any man lie to you and tell you any different. Because man has messed with, with God's plan so much. They, I bet these 500 churches in Bradley and Polk County Right? If we would all come together That's right. and do what God has put us to do, it says go into all the world and preach. What does preach mean? It means to proclaim the gospel. What is, the God, what is God's definition or the biblical definition of the gospel? What is that? It says to proclaim the good news that Christ died for the world. He died for those people out here that don't know what gender they are. He died. One of the biggest truths that God has ever spoke to me, it helped me to understand how much He loved me. He said, son, he spoke to my heart. I, I mean, my hair hurt it. He spoke to my heart and said, Son, I love the abortion doctor as much as I love those babies that they're cutting up and throwing in the garbage. It took me years to wrap my mind around that because I can't, I, for a long time, I couldn't see that. How a man or a woman can make a living murdering innocent children. I'd said for years that God died for Adolf Hitler and Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden. 
just like he died for us, and that was the truth. But when he told, when God spoke to my heart, said, "Oh, that's, that love that I have is far bigger than those men. They just men. I love that serial murderer that's willing to destroy lives, thousands of lives. Do you re- do you realize since the nineteen forties? Worldwide, there's been over a billion children murdered. A billion murdered. And God loves those people that committed those murders as much as He loves that innocent that died to make their living. If you ever want to understand the love of God, You need to understand that. He loves us that much. The the long suffering of God, I've never understood it. Because I run the roads of this nation from coast to coast. Out of the will of God for uh, over a decade, almost 12 years. But He never once condemned me. There is therefore now... No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I told them at a church down here last Sunday, I said, I feel like I'm, I'm special. And there's a lot of people in this world who look at me out of the corner of their eyes and say, yeah, you are. <laughs> know what I mean? They know exactly where I've been. I've got people that I love dearly, that I love dearly. They look at me like, you ain't never going to be nothing. Honey, they have no idea. Just hide and watch. Because I know what Jesus has done for the world, let alone Stacey Hayes. My podcast is named, my ministry is named The Prodigal Son. Because if you've ever seen one, you're looking at him. Luke 15, 11 through 24 talks about that, that young boy that took all that his daddy had give him and went and wasted it. Wasted it. Said he wakes up, said he came to himself in that hog pen and he said, I'm going to go back to my father and I'm going to tell him. Now listen, he had a speech already written out. He said, I'm going to tell him that, Father, I've sinned against you and against heaven and am no more worthy to be called thy son. He said, just make me a hired servant. He said, my father's got servants with more than enough to eat. He takes off for home. Says the the father saw him at a distance. You, you got to understand about Jewish culture. Jews don't run. They, they become of age past bar mitzvah. A train will run over a Jewish man before he runs. But God wrote down in, in the 15th chapter of Luke, that that father saw him at a distance and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him put a robe on his back and shoes on his feet and a signet ring on his finger. And that ring was meant to show him and everybody around him that he was part of that family. The young man stood up and said, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven and am no more worthy to be called thy son. And the father stopped him. He said, don't you say another word. He said, he called for the fatted calf. He said, let's celebrate. He didn't let him finish and speak over himself that he was just an old sinner saved by grace. You understand that? God don't want us running our mouths about ourselves, about who we used to be. He wants us to be to, to start saying that I am that new creature. God had made has made me a new creature through Christ Jesus. I don't know. I don't care if you stumped your toe coming into this 
to church and said a few Sunday school words before you got started. You know what a Sunday school word is, is don't you? I'm just going to get right down here where everybody can understand. Right? We make mistakes. We've all sinned. We've all sinned. But Jesus Christ died to justify Stacy Hayes. He died to justify every one of you. He died to justify every living human being that's ever walked the face of this planet. And my job, my commission in life is to teach them who they are, who they have been made to be in Christ Jesus. That prodigal son went back willing to be a hired servant. He came back and got his feet slid right back up under the same table that he had left. Now you want to see religion in that story? Let me show you religion because it's blatant. The older brother stood up and said, look what he's done. If that ain't the devil, ain't a cow in Texas. Look what he has done. You mean you're going to have to throw a party? I ain't never had a party thrown for me. Right? That's religion. But I'm going to tell you what religion will cause you to miss. Who you are and what you've been given. You go back to that, fir that first part of that story. What did the, the father do? He gave, gave them all his living. He gave it to his sons. He was living on that farm as not the owner. He gave both of them everything that he had. He said, son, you could have thrown a party anytime you wanted. Your brother was dead and he's alive again. We had a reason to have this issue here. Understand something today. God wants us all to know who we are or who we can be in Christ Jesus because we are His hands, His feet, and His mouthpiece. If we don't reach the world, who's going to? He didn't, he didn't put us here to carry Him around on a pedestal. He put us here to proclaim what He has done in our lives, our family's life. Out here in this world, the world don't see God the way we see Him. If you've got that card, look at that card. There's a picture on that card on the back side of it. It's a two-part picture. That top part of that picture is what the world sees God as. He sees him. They see, the world sees God. Religion sees God. It's some bipolar old man that can't be pleased. No matter how hard you try, you cannot please the religious God of that picture right there. That's religion. You'll always fall short. That's what the law was written for to show us how short mankind had come to being in God's good graces. Jesus died to fulfill that law. Here, I had to come to God on all fours with a puddle of tears under my head. That ain't bold. That ain't a bit bold. That's coming not knowing what you're going to get. Right? Right? That's coming whether or not God's going to be the picture on the top or the picture on the bottom. Our Heavenly Father is the picture on the bottom of that picture. One that's got His arms open wide saying, come here. Let me help you understand who I have made you to be in that perfect sacrifice that was laid down on that cross freely for you. I promise you that is the most important thing that you'll ever learn in your entire life past being born again.
past giving your heart and life to Jesus Christ, knowing who you are in that sacrifice, knowing who He has made you to be, is the most important thing that you will ever find out on this earth. Money can't buy it. 1 Peter 1.18 said we're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Mankind couldn't buy that. He could not buy that. But Jesus gave it away free for all of us. Find out who you are. Romans 10 and 9 said if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There's millions and millions and millions of people that have done that, but they've never been taught what all the writings of Paul went to all that trouble to write for us so that we could be walking in that new covenant. That blood that was, has cleansed all mankind. All we've got to do is accept that and believe that. There's millions out here in this world that will argue with you. I believe in God. I believe in what Jesus done. I, you know, they, they try to get you off subject. They believe Jesus died. They believe that He rose again. But they've never, for themselves, invited Him in. Right? They've never invited Him in to be Lord of their life. There's a lot of born-again people on this earth that have never made Jesus Lord. Making Jesus Lord is making His Word front and center the most important thing in this world to them. John 1.14 says the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. And if we submit ourselves to God, we submit ourselves to His Word. And if I promise you, I know this just as sure as I know my, my name and, and I know that the sun comes up in the east and sets in the west. If you will submit yourself Therefore, to what that new covenant says to you and believe it without a shadow of a doubt, you'll be a different person for the rest of your days. I'm not the same man I used to be. Never will be again. There's a lot of people in my life that look at me and say, you have changed. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I don't put up with no junk being thrown at me. And I'm going to do my best to help you not to throw it at yourself. Because our mouth, our mouth can make us or break us. What did Mark eleven twenty three 23 say? It said that whosoever shall say into this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but by believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he says. Jesus said that. I didn't. God himself spoke that truth. Now, he didn't go as far as to say all the negative things, all the derogatory things that we say about ourselves will do the same thing. Because nine times out of ten, if you're, ble- you're speaking a bunch of junk and you believe it in your heart, you'll know it. I promise you, it'll come to fruition before your eyes. We got born again the same way by, uh, by confessing Him and believing what He said. We get everything the same way, but we have got to understand that if we're speaking a bunch of doubt, fear, and unbelief over the situations that we're in, We've missed it. We're going to struggle the rest of our days because we're not speaking the truth over our situations, over ourselves, over our families. I'm going to tell you one more thing and I'm going to close. 
we saw a miracle. Long before we saw the miracle that work was worked in my life, in my son. My son will soon be, was he 27? He just turned 27. That mama knows. Daddy has to think. He's 27 years old, and my son had been way out there. I'm not going, I'm not going to give his testimony. Sooner or later, he'll give it. The last time that he left my house, we watched him walk off the hill. I got off the tractor, come into the house. I told his mama and his sister, I said, come in here, we're going to do something. I said, we're going to agree, according to Mark 18, or not 18, 19, or 19, 18, if to agree concerning anything, as touching anything, it shall be done. I said, we're going to agree right now that no harm is going to come to that boy. And that boy is going to wake up one of these days and be one of the finest humans ever walked. You know, it wasn't just a few months. He's in Bible school in Otogaville, Alabama today, a different person. When I was in, when I was in the hospital, you know who my encourager was? That boy, they allowed him to call me every day. He didn't call me crying and going on about the position I was in. He said, I want to read you the truth. God's Word. What He has said about this. For two solid weeks, He'd call and He talked to His mom and He talked to me before He got off the phone. He said, now I want to read God's Word. We've got it stuck on the refrigerator. He printed it off. He wanted to give me what I needed. He was, he was worried about me. I, I didn't want to tell him that through all that until I started coming out of that fog and can see I, I couldn't fo focus. I was like I was looking through a dark or a glass darkly. Couldn't see. He said, are you not in the Word? I said, no, son. I'll be all right. He'd call. He, he'd done everything he knew to do to lift me up. And he didn't do it squalling and begging God to do something that he already done 2,000 years ago when Jesus took stripes to heal us all. To heal us all. He died on the cross. And, and he took stripes for our healing, for our sin and our sickness. Matthew 8, 17 Somebody look at it. You can get to it, Tracy. I know you can. Now, this is a New Testament translation of Isaiah 53 4. Said it that, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities, and bear our sicknesses. I'm going to tell you something today. If God bore my sicknesses, yes, sir. I ain't about to bear them for Him. It's done. It's over with. The doctors, they've still got me on blood thinner, and I'm going to do what I've, what I've been told to do. My boss back there said I should. I got really upset in that hospital because they wouldn't let me out of that hospital. I knew what was going to happen. The guy said, we can't put enough oxygen in your car to get you five hours from here because we weren't going to fly. We missed our flight two weeks before that. He said, I can't get you home. You, you ain't, you're, uh, you're not going to change my mind. Boy, I was hot. She says, Stacy, this is out of your character. Remember I was talking about we've all fallen short. I was hot. Woke up the morning I was about to leave. Now this is how good God is now. After I'd pitched a fit the night before. I'm just being honest with you. I'm not, I mean, I'm a man. I'm flesh and blood like everybody else is. 
after I'd pitched a fit the night before. The next morning I wake up at 2.30 like somebody was driving a spike into my back. I'm thinking I've laid here for two weeks and now this joker's got me my back hurting and over and above all this other mess, my back's hurting. I went home that morning. We got up. They said, well, just take some time now. He didn't even bat an eye that my back was hurting. He ought to have had enough sense to take an x-ray. Because what was it? That Wednesday? I woke up Wednesday morning and knew it just as sure as I know my name. You've got pneumonia. After two weeks in the hospital, I woke up, told her, I said, call, get us an appointment. We need an x-ray. I've got pneumonia. Walked into the doctor's office. He took those x-rays. He walked back out there, a young man. All big-eyed. I'm liable to have to put you back in the hospital. And I said, no, you ain't put me in no hospital. So you give me what I need, and it will work to perfection. I took one dose of it. Gone. After all that mess... I'd act like, acted like Stacy. God's grace. He's faithful. He loves us. He don't want us living in a bunch of junk, self-induced shame and condemnation. He wants us to live in the truth that He has written down for us to live in. And that's His Word. Now, I don't know who's going to play the piano, what y'all going to do. I'm going to ask you today, are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Do you know, without a shadow of a doubt, if you died today, where you would end up? I want you to put that decision to bed whether you come down here or whether you sit there, I want you to understand that that is a decision to make and know. But then I want you to know this, if you're born again and you've never taken this Word for what it says, I want you to make your mind up that today I'm going to believe what God's Word says above all opinion. I'm going to take what God has shown me and written down for me to live in and I'm going to live in it for the rest of my days. I'm going to tell you why this, this is beneficial to you. Because your family and your friends need to see a light in this world. And if all they're seeing out of us is a bunch of doubt and fear and unbelief, they don't want that. They don't want that. I mean, look, the world has seen enough. It's time that God's people comes to a place that they're going to believe God. Believe Him today as they sing. I'm so glad that you tuned in to the Prodigal Son Sunday podcast. If you're a partner of this ministry, I want to thank you for all that you do sowing into God's kingdom through this ministry to help people be strong in who they are in Him, to get fed with His Word, not a bunch of tradition. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into God's kingdom. Now listen, go to our website. Get in touch with us. There's all kinds of resources on there that are free to anybody that'll take them. I want you to understand and to know this. God has called me to give this away so that others can see and understand how strong they can be in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into His kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.